Well, hello, Sea Life. It's Kim Hammond here, and uh, I'm hosting the conversation this week. Uh, Andrew Chisholm, our senior minister, is away on holidays. And I have my good friend, uh, our creative ministries pastor, Jules Ham. Jules, uh, great to have you with us. Thanks, Kim. Good to see you. It's great to see you. Uh, so, uh, Frank DiMaggio spoke to Seed Life on the weekend. And yep. uh, what did you think? I loved it. I think um, I, I love the fact that even uh, our senior minister um, recognised that this was not just a great word, but a really timely word and uh, a word for, for our church, but for right now in this season. Um, and, uh, you know, even just to have the humility to give up one of his own preaching spots so that we could hear what God was wanting to say through Frank. Um, that was really great. It helped me really lean in and just um, hear a bit more of what uh, what Frank has to say and hear how it might uh, might be applicable to my own life at the moment. I thought it was great to take a moment in the middle of the sermon and just the, the and just take a moment to reflect about what God's saying. And mm. uh, I, I, what kind of what, what are some of the themes that stood out for you, Jules, in terms of some of uh, Frank's topics? Yeah, I mean it was a very rich message, and uh, he unpacked a lot. I I value even just some of the stuff that. Um, Frank said, just setting up the idea of what opportunity looks like, what God opportunity looks like. Um, but more specifically, I, I love the way that he used some of those different Greek words that link back to opportunity as well. And even just painting a bit of a picture of some of the different ways that God can speak to us now. Um, I think that sometimes in our, you know, we, we have very specific words and opportunity can look and feel like many different ways sometimes to look at some of the different languages and some of the different angles that come from that can be really cool. Um, the idea of, uh, you know, Kairos moments being a, a real moment in time that being linked to, yeah, the, the kind of time, the timing, the season, um, where things can come about, uh, can kind of come to a head in that way. Um, Eukarya, which is kind of God taking a number of different things and aligning them almost like kind of, fitting together a whole bunch of pieces of a puzzle to reveal something that he wants us to see an opportunity there in that way. And then uh, like top off that, that idea of kind of being brought into a really tight specific place and, and that kind of tight place becoming the right place. And I, I thought that was really interesting, but as I thought about it more and more, I, I recognized different moments in my own life where I probably felt all of those different things. And, and if I really think about it, can see how God was, moving in those ways to bring out a, a new opportunity or a new revelation, something that he wanted to speak to me or show me from that. We talk about Kairos a bit at Sea Life at the moment. Uh, we're talking, we, we're just starting to implement some huddles and, and use this kind of Kairos moment. What, what, what is God saying and how we're responding? And, you know, I think when you're a younger person, it's hard to see the hand of God in all these things and learn to discern. Talk to me a little bit about that and how that has shaped your life and what sort of things could we help uh, people start to enter into those moments? Yeah. I, I really valued uh, someone. I had someone in my, my life really sort of sit me down and, and talk to me about this idea, what Kairos time and timing looks like um, and how God kind of aligns his own time with our timing a little bit. Um, and, and something that's so simple but really uh, can be quite profound is, is just trying to come back to questions like what's, what's God trying to say right now? What's he wanting to say and speak to us in our season? And then what's, what do we need to do about it? What, what is that, uh, how does that need to change our, our actions, our steps, our, our direction? Um, it's such a simple um, thing. What's God saying? What do we need to do about it? And then at the same time, those are really huge questions, you know, for, I think for most people, if you just ask them point blank, what is God saying? Um, that immediately paints pictures of, uh, you know, how are the heavens opening up and God's voice booming to you right now? Um, which is, that's never been my experience. Um, but like I said, if I think about it, I've recognized there have been real pivotal moments in my own life where the, the, significant moments, things have either uh, changed or, or um, uh, I've had a quite, a, quite 
profound events happen in my life. And it's been those that have been the springboard where I've been able to probably not so much God's been able to speak into that, but I've been able to listen a bit better and probably catch a little bit more what he's wanting to say to me. Um, simple things like even just having, having my first son being born and becoming a father, there's something more about the father heart that I've all of a sudden been open to and being able to learn more about um, who God is in that way to really specific moments where my third son, when he was born, um, he had to spend uh, a month in the Royal Children's Hospital. And that, that was a big shake up to our, our day-to-day life and everything else in life had to go on, on pause for about six weeks. And I think, I think about that moment and go, gosh, if I didn't have to kind of step out of my day-to-day rhythm and life, I don't know if I would have been in a position to be able to really hear what God was wanting to say in that moment. God spoke some really profound things to both my wife, Beck, and, and myself from that moment when my son was born um, that changed the trajectory that we were on in that moment. So I think it's probably, uh, for me, it's been not so much, it's certainly about what is God saying, but it's probably learning a little bit more about learning to stop in different ways. Stop, listen, open ourselves up and, and go, could this be a moment that God's wanting to show me something different? Could it be something where he's wanting to speak into something specific and then take it from there? That's really great, Jules. I was reflecting just on my own journey coming to this conversation and just thinking, you know, I can look back now in hindsight and just go, there was very significant decision-making times. And I think Frank encouraged this more reflection, you know, to press in and to see what God is teaching. And, you know, um, you know, your son being in hospital for a month, you know, my son having cancer, God doesn't cause those things. But what he does is, is use it as a teaching moment and to speak and and we learn a lot of things about compassion and love and life. They're the valleys and the and the peaks of life. And and uh, I know for me there was there were several moments. I, as, as Frank was speaking, I kept thinking about these moments in my life where where I had two paths. You know, one was to become the national youth director of our denomination I grew up in, which was a dream job I wanted the whole time, or go work a day a week for Alan Hirsch in, as an administrator. And I, I remember talking to a mentor and getting some discernment and, you know, having to decide do I work for one denomination or do I serve the whole kingdom of God and all the churches in Melbourne? And, and, and that decision changed the rest of my life and got me to travel around the world. And, and uh, same with coming to see life, you know, it was, you know, I had a couple of different job offers and, and uh, they, were, they were good. They're not one's bad and evil and one's good, but trying to discern the will of God in those decisions. Um, and, uh, I remember my wife waking up one morning in, in America, we'd come to the end of our time and she said, I think you're going to work for Sid Life. It was kind of a thus saith the Lord moment. She doesn't speak like that, that's right. <laughs> but I remember thinking that's it. Like she was right. Um, and I'm so grateful for making the, the decisions of that. Have you had those kind of moments in your life? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. I think, um, even just ref- like what I was saying before that season with our son being born um, and needing to have that time in hospital. I absolutely agree. I've never for, for a day thought that that was God orchestrated that to be able to say something, but I think he used that moment. Um, and I, it's probably a really indirect thing, but at the same time, I look at that and go, gosh, that, that caused the chain of events that actually led to us moving to city life. It's yeah. a really bizarre thing to think about it in that way, but I go, gosh, I wonder if I would have been in a position to, hear God's voice clearly enough to be able to change direction like that if we hadn't have gone through that season. Um, it makes me stop and just take in this season that we're in. I've, I don't, never for a day thought that, uh, you know, God caused COVID-19 and all the challenges that's coming from that. Uh, but at the same time, just as we've been hearing about that, while we have these obstacles, they can also be the same things that cause opportunity. For God and and that's there's something in this moment where you know being locked down in our home um, being in the neighborhood a little bit more um, I'm living and rubbing shoulders with the people that I live with in my neighborhood more than I've ever done before in my life and it just makes me go gosh I think there's something there I haven't I haven't fully discovered it yet but I think there's something here and I want to stay open to that um, 
you know, I've had people that have had specific words for me as well. I've had people who have spoken about uh, really specific things like a call of leadership or uh, going into ministry. Um, and that's been really helpful. But I think it's been those sort of longer journeys and those longer discoveries of what God's been wanting to say that have been more impacting and more powerful in my life that have actually set me up for what God's wanting to do as well. What are some of the things the Lord's taught you out of some of these times, whether it was your son being sick or, you know, changing churches or having to step into a larger role? What are some of the lessons of leadership that you feel like that God's taught you and spoken to you about? Um, Patience is probably a really big one. (laughs) I think it's patience. Uh, It's probably things like really trusting God more. Um, knowing that it's all in his strength and his understanding and so much more his timing, that that's what's best. Um, I think there's been some, some specific things um, about having God probably speak into certain directions and changes in life. And maybe I, he set me on a path that is definitely in his will and, and for the sake of his kingdom and where he's wanting to have Uh, an incredible impact but at the same time it's maybe taken me off a road that is probably a little bit more uh, trodden on a bit more um, where it feels a bit more familiar and comfortable and he's taken me off on a on a side road that is a little bit more rugged Um, it's a bit more challenging um, and he's certainly wanting to use that to grow my leadership but I think about how I needed to have that moment where I had a a real revelation from God, a moment of clarity, so that when I get to those bumpy moments, I can keep coming back to, but no, I know and I have a peace in my heart that God um, directed me down this path um, or led me to be able to step into this path. um, And that helps me not be shaken by some of the challenges and the obstacles that come. It keeps me grounded in... um, what I know of God and what I know that God has uh, has for me in those moments. I was thinking about this like it's in the in the doors that open that are amazing opportunities, and it's also in the tough times like you know your son's sickness. I was thinking about my father-in-law who passed earlier on in the year, and Maria and I were away on our anniversary, and we got a call from our, my mother-in-law to come to the hospital. He was very unwell. He, he's had a long-term degenerative disease. Um, and so he was, you know, um, he, he was a long he was a long time sick. And so so he'd been admitted to hospital and we stood around the bed, uh, our families, um, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and kids, and we, we all prayed and worshipped and kind of said our goodbyes. And, and he'd been asleep for like three days and I, we, it looked like he was just going to pass. And the next morning, he woke up and asked for donuts and Chinese food. And I remember going out with uh, some friends of ours, and and they said, "What do you think the Lord's doing in this?" And I remember just being t- just completely taken off guard. And I believe deeply in these chorus moments, but I remember just thinking, "What's the Lord doing? Yeah, why isn't he like he was ready to go? He'd said his goodbyes. He'd said to his wife, my mother-in-law, he was ready to go." But actually, we look back now and see the Lord's hand in it. His brother, his brother was away on a cruise ship. This is pre-COVID, um, and uh, and uh, and he'd been away, and, and Gary wouldn't have been able to say goodbye to his brother, and so he he lived another month, and and they ended up going out for lunch the weekend he passed, and had this beautiful kind of memory uh, with his brother, and there's sort of some significant events that I kind of am so grateful, but you, we couldn't see it at the time. Because he'd been yeah. sick for a long time, but sometimes it's just taking that moment to to get some space and objectivity, and to say, "Okay, Lord, what are you teaching? What, what, where is your voice in this? And how do I respond? How do I get my roots to grow deep? So when life washes over us, we'll stand." Um, and I want my kids to learn this. I, I I hope that we can continue to teach this right across our church. Yeah, yeah, That's I, brilliant. I, uh, what would you say to our congregation and people who are watching this in small groups and as we're kind of coming to a close, what would be the lessons that, out of Frank's talk and some of the things that yeah. you've mentioned? I think this is a life I love about you, Jules, that you live in obedience to his voice. What else would you say as we wrap up? Yeah, I, I think even just 
Gosh, it, even in the time that I've had learning some of this for myself, um, they're very rarely quick um, things that we hear from God. They're very rarely, even the things that feel instantaneous, there's usually a, a long journey coming up to that moment or coming up to a point. Um, and I'm, it's a hard lesson. I feel like I'm, I'm still very much learning how to lean into that and just be okay with going God's God's very slowly revealing something to me, or he's getting me prepared for something. And I want the answers right now. You know, I want to know exactly what God has for me next. I think so many of us often get to that place, but I know that um, uh, if God was to, I, I just know of myself, if God were to give me the answers right there um, when it wasn't the right time, um, I probably would have been incredib- incredibly grateful, but I wouldn't have been changed from it. Um, whereas what God's done for me so many times has taken me through something to discover with him um, what he's wanting to say. And rather than just kind of uh, placing something on my lap or giving it to me on a silver platter, he's going, let's go out and actually discover the answer together. And actually, it's, it's more often felt like uh, digging something up from the dirt. And, and there's something so much more precious about uh, discovering things from God in that way. And I know that I've held on to those treasures much longer because I've gone through the journey to get to that point. Um, I think I've also learnt that for me, a big part is um, having good people around me be part of the process in discovering that. And it's probably not so much been, um, sometimes God brings incredible wisdom through the experience of other people or through the teaching of other people. Um, what I've learned more and more is I, I really value having good people around me that just know how to ask good questions that help me work through some of this stuff. I think, um, you know, there've been times where I have just gone, Oh, I don't know. I, I, I I'm feeling something there. I'm not quite sure what it is. I, I don't know. And I feel like if I was left to my own devices, I'm maybe I'd just get a bit stuck there in that moment but I've had someone else come alongside me and not try and figure it out for me or teach me in that moment, but just ask questions and just go, um, what do you think when I ask questions about this? And I'll explain it a little bit more. And through those conversations and through those discussions and those reflection moments, more of that has been unpacked and teased out. And in that process, God's been able to reveal even more to me than in that moment. And I really value those leaders that have the wisdom to not try and give the answers themselves, but understand that their role is to um, maybe position the person that they're leading to hear from the Holy Spirit a bit better because that answer and that information and that revelation is going to be so much more lasting than anything that they might have to say in that moment. It's really good. I, I know when we were discerning coming home, like there was a part of my brain uh, when we were living in America, you know, I'd just written a book. It was starting to do really well. I was getting preaching invitations across all of America. I got to speak at Rick Warren's church. And I remember just thinking, you know, part of my brain was like, this is the place we need to stay. But my wife and and people I trust and love, we had discerned it was time to come home. And, and I look back now and I think, even though logically, on one hand, it was easy to follow where where it looked more attractive and I loved my time in America, but I am, I was called back here and there's a calling to see life and there's a calling to be back in Australia that I don't regret at all. And I think when you have a peace in your heart, even though, cause I remember how hard it was. I remember being turning 40 and thinking, I don't want to make new friends at sea life. This is so hard. You know, you have to start all these new friendships and, you know, people are probably thinking, wow, he's an extrovert. He must love that. But, I, but the lesson was to stick and to stay and to, and to, to, to go through the door and be faithful to it and just keep hearing what the Lord's taught me. And I've learned so much in the last five years and I'm so grateful to be home and and I have no regrets. And I think when you feel like you follow the voice of God and even though when it goes through slum times and, and hard times, um, the lessons we learned and what we do is really valuable. Mm, absolutely. Well, we, we thank you for listening to us today on The Conversation. This is Jules Ham and Kim Hammond. We love you. I hope you got lots out of Frank's talk. And I hope as you explore this in, in life groups 
and in your own life. I hope you get a great blessing out of this time. Thanks so much for being with us, Jules. Thanks, Kim. Really appreciate it. Hey, Jules, how about we just pray together, hey? Yeah, brilliant. Father, I thank you so much for Jules' story. I thank you that you brought him and Beck to City Life. I thank you for the lessons that he's learned to listen and respond to those Kairos moments. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in our church. I thank you for this new chapter we're entering into. And Father, I pray that if every person who listens to Frank's message and deep dives this week into asking, what are the doors we must step through? What are the lessons you are teaching us? That you grow us deep, Father, that when life washes over us, that we'll be people of character and formation. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen.